People often wonder why the CPU meter in FL Studio doesn't match the CPU meter in Windows Task Manager. In this video, I will explain why this is the case. If this is your first time here and you want to learn all about FL Studio and music production in general, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell as well. You have probably experienced this before. The CPU meter in FL Studio goes into the red and the sound starts cracking. At the same time, Windows Task Manager tells you that you're only using 20% of your CPU. Now, this doesn't make much sense, so I can see why people get frustrated. Some even wonder if there's something wrong with FL Studio. In order to make sense of this, you first have to understand that the CPU meter in FL Studio isn't the same thing as the CPU meter in Windows. The CPU meter in Windows will give you an indication of your total overall CPU usage, while the CPU meter in FL Studio is instead monitoring your CPU's real-time processing capacity with regard to filling the audio buffer, or more simply put, your CPU's ability to play back the audio in real time without interruption. For example, if the CPU meter in FL Studio is reading 40%, then that means that FL Studio can fill the buffer in 40% of the available time. If it reaches 100%, then that means that you've run out of time and it will now start to lag behind. When that happens, you'll start hearing glitches, stuttering, and noise. Audio production is extremely demanding on a CPU because it requires the sound to be played back in real time. It has to instantaneously process all of your VSTs, your effects, and so on, and then play it back with a minuscule amount of delay. In the past, processors used to have just one core, and this core just kept getting faster and faster with every new CPU. Today, cores are still getting faster, of course, but the focus has somewhat shifted. Modern processors tend to favor more cores over single core performance, and there's a good reason for this. Having more cores is like having several processors in one chip. This means that it can do more work at the same time, and most applications are written specifically to take advantage of this capability. Unfortunately, more cores means more heat. The obvious solution is to slightly sacrifice the performance of each individual core, that way, less heat is generated and you can have more cores instead. Overall, it's better to have more cores since more work can be done at the same time in parallel. However, when it comes to music production, the opposite is often the case because you can't always process in parallel. Single core performance now suddenly becomes much more important. Sure, you'll still benefit from having more cores, of course, but only to an extent. This has to do with the way all DAWs process information. Here's a very simplified example I've set up to illustrate. Try to imagine that these cups are CPU cores, and that the water is the audio workload. Let's drill a small hole at the bottom and pretend that this is the rate at which the core can process information. It works fine as long as the workload isn't too great. But as soon as one of the cores reaches 100%, it will spill over, and now there will be crackling and glitches in my audio playback. Now I could keep adding more cores, but as you can see, that won't really address the main problem, since much of what happens with audio processing can't be processed in parallel. If I were to check Windows Task Manager in this case, it would tell me that my CPU was working at 30% capacity or something, which is true, but at the same time quite misleading. This is a very oversimplified explanation, of course, but hopefully it will help you understand why the CPU meter in FL Studio is designed the way it is. It shows you the true CPU usage with regard to the buffer, which is the only thing that really matters to you as a producer. Check out my video in the description below about how to get better CPU performance in FL Studio. I'd like to thank our Patreons for their ongoing support, and as always, if there's any specific tutorial you'd like us to make, or if you have a question, just let us know in the comments below. Also, make sure to check out the links below if you need feedback on your music, mixing, mastering, and so on. Thanks for watching.